the Reef High School and College BBC News School Report team. Overall, we've been looking at aspects of life in a rural school and we'll be focusing on that in a moment. But first, news broke only this week that Reef College has got the best resource in its history. I'm really proud with uh, how the students have performed. We do tremendously well with our A-levels, but I'm particularly proud at the moment as we just had a certificate posted through from ALPS. ALPS analyses the performance of colleges across the UK and they have said that we're in the top 1% of all the colleges for our performance at A-level. So how does that make you feel? I feel incredibly proud. The students work really hard and the staff work hard to support them. And it's really good to see that they are getting their just deserved. Trinity reporting there. Now we're going over to Becky from the mental health team. One in four people experience mental health problems every year, with increasing numbers of people both self-harming and suffering suicidal thoughts. The numbers suggest people can't cope as statistics show that one in ten children, three in every classroom, have some sort of mental health problem. We are trying to find out how to stay mentally healthy. We asked students what they thought on mental health. How can school help with mental health? We've only had one assembly on mental illness and it's all about sort of getting information out there because if, if you have no idea what's happening in your brain you can feel so alone and like you can't speak to anyone about it whereas in reality that's not the situation at all. There are loads of people suffering with mental illness and you can always go and talk to someone but school sort of needs to push that and tell people places that they can go to get help. Do you find the media influences you? The media sort of presents a distorted view of reality and it can be hard not to get into that headspace where you have to act like everyone else um, acts like on social media and when in reality that's what not what they're going through they're sort of just posting the highlights mm -hmm. um, and it can also sort of affect your body image if they're um, mm -hmm. posting a selfie that's taken them 10 minutes to sort of pose for um, it can it makes you want to look like that whereas in reality they they probably have body image issues as well. Do you know where to go for mental health advice? Yes, you can come and visit us, the Ralph team, on the main corridor. We have a Ralph room and we're here to help and we're here to listen. Or you can phone your school nurse on 07480635060. How much of a problem is mental health for students? Certainly an increasing problem, especially in young people today. It's uh, definitely got a lot to do with social media and people not, young people not having the skills to deal with it. I think they definitely need to learn a little bit of resilience. What do you think impacts student mental health? Social media definitely, peer pressure, um, lots of things, the pressure within themselves to conform, um, pressure from school, uh, even pressure from families. How can students be helped more? Some more lessons in PSHE. We have started to do more in Key Stage 3, so we need to do some more with Key Stage 4. Bring in some outside agencies like MAP and uh, people with proper experience with how to deal with things and hopefully improve the awareness and the lessons. So how can we stay mentally healthy? Don't let false images and ideas produced in the media impact you. Know there is always somewhere to go for help and you are not alone. Thank you mental health team. Now we turn to the environment. Here's Trinity. Today, our big question is, are younger generations being taught enough about the environment? This is Trinity, reporting for BBC News School Report from Reefham Primary School, talking to pupils and teachers about their understanding of the environment. It would be beneficial for current environmental topics to be taught in more depth at primary schools and why. We, for example, next term, our whole school are dedicating all of us studying to a topic called How to Save the World, which is fundamentally about in, uh, the environmental sort of impacts of things like climate change. Um, I think it's so important that children at a young age have this really embedded so as they grow, future generations will actually be able to take action to stop these things happening. Um, so yeah, definitely really important. Living in, in the school, we do litter picking, picking up the litter that people might have dropped. Do you want to m learn more about the local environment at school and what would interest you? I would love to learn more about the local environment and about what are the dangers of pollution and what might it do in the future and what we can do to help it.
obviously we hope that children enjoy their environment outside of school and learn to appreciate it by climbing trees, by visiting our beautiful countryside and coastline here. Um, and there are some children who perhaps they might not get those experiences at home, so it's really important at school that we offer those sorts of experiences as well. Do you notice a change in the environment compared to your school area? Yes, because when we went to West Bronton, there may have been less trees, but there was more sea life. On these school trips, have you ever seen something that you haven't seen before? Uh, yes, when we went to West Bronton, we saw more crabs and sea anemones. And also when we went to West Bronton, we found out that each year the cliffs erode one metre. When we went to London the other day, um, I noticed it's a busier place than um, where we um, live and go to school. There's much taller buildings and loads and loads of people on the streets. Thank you, Environment Team. Now we hand over to Bryony with the Transport Team. Electric cars, they may be new, but they're definitely going to be taking over with a new proposed government ban on new petrol and diesel cars coming by 2040. But some MPs say that's not soon enough, even though electric cars currently account for fewer than one in a hundred of new cars on our roads. We looked into how electric cars will impact rural communities. We interviewed electric car owner Lorna Becker about the practicalities of an electric car. How long does it take to charge the car? Um, on the home charger, it can take um, from zero, which I never get down to zero um, charge, um, two hours maximum. But on a supercharger, if I um, stop off on route to anywhere, then I can use um, a supercharger and it takes 15 minutes to charge the car. We spoke to Scott Valance, a guide dog user and coordinator for the Norwich Forum. Scott said his major concern is whether car manufacturers are going to make cars with some sort of indication of the car coming, as at present the electric car cannot be heard. He asked some of the members of the public about the impacts of electric cars. Do you think that electric cars are having an impact on the environment? Yes they are, not necessarily good because uh, they're using the residual power that's made from a power station so the, uh, the pollution is still there it's just that they're using the, the amount of power that's left in the evening rather than dump it into the ground. They're going to use that to charge them up overnight. So, yes and no. We interviewed Martin Taylor, business manager of the Volvo Garage in Norwich, regarding electric cars. How will electric cars affect rural areas? With rural areas, the more electric cars have become more available, or more uh, electric cars which are being used, there will be more infrastructure that needs to be put into place, so more power points, more charging, more charging points. Um, yeah, more cars, more points, power points, but I, I don't see it affecting rural areas that much at all. How long will it be until all cars at Volvo are electric? Okay, Volvo are by 2020 going to have um, an electric motor on all their vehicles. That electric motor is then going to be paired with a petrol or a diesel engine. Okay, um, for pure electric, uh, it, it's, it's going to be coming through a company called Polestar, which is a part of Volvo, and that should be with us around by 2020, 2021. Nine out of ten people living in rural areas said that they'd consider buying an electric car. This means that we'll be seeing a lot more of electric cars on the roads in the future. Thank you, Transport Team. Our last report is from the Allotment Team. This is the Allotment Team reporting on the Reef High School and College Allotment Project with BBC News School Report. Uh, you know, I think it's brilliant as it is. If it just grows slightly and involves more students and more of the community, then, then great. But actually, I think already it has to be regarded as hugely successful. And now we are going over to Mr Willer, who is the founder of the Allotment Project. What was your initial idea when you started the Allotment Project and where did your motivation come from? My initial idea was I wanted a place in the school where young people and children could come to escape from the busyness of the school day. Okay. And do you think that having a school allotment means that students are more likely to choose to spend time outdoors? 
I very much hope so. I mean, for me, this whole place, yes, it's called the allotment project, but I also think of it as the outdoor classroom. There's all... Here we have Olivia and Sean, who are student volunteers for the allotment project. Why do you volunteer in a school allotment? Um, I really like it because I like the fresh air and I really like the chickens. Why do you volunteer in a school allotment? Well, I mean, I just think it's a good thing just to get like, outside and just do you know, fun stuff. Okay, and why do you think that the allotment project has been so successful? Because <coughs> everybody helped and everybody yeah, thinks okay. that it's, it's like, worth it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, although it involves a certain amount of students on a daily basis, weekly basis, there are a lot of people from the community who are involved, so I'd, I'd put it as a real community project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, allotment team. Thank you for watching me from High School and Colleges BBC News School Report. I hope you have enjoyed our news.